The role of a caddy has been a hot topic around the golfing world recently, but just as a golfer relies on their driver, a caddy is lost without their yardage book. So if a pro is getting their driver from their caddy, and the caddy is getting their yardages from a book, who's mapping the course for the caddies? Well, that job falls to Graham Heinrich, an Australian who's been making professional golf tick for 20 years. Since 1990 on the European Tour, I've been creating yardage books or course guides for the players and the caddies, um, both in yards and in metres. And um, it's really the caddies' job being taken care of for them, so they don't have to come and spend a full day on the course and map it out. So I'm mapping it from tee to green, mapping the greens, the slopes and undulations there and on the fairways, and all the relevant points on the hole that you might be hitting to, water hazards, bunkers, trees that might be in the sides of fairways but are in play and mapping them and getting distances to and from those points to the green. I'm here on a Thursday beforehand, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday I'm mapping the course and marking the course. Sunday's a drawing day generally and then Monday's printing, cutting and, and collation and, and selling Monday and Tuesday and then by Tuesday night I'm finished. How do you measure? Using lasers. In the last 10 years, they've become commonplace on tour, and I think the first laser I bought was 3,000 US dollars. But now they're down to three, 400 US dollars, and they're pretty good, actually, up against the theodolite. They're generally within a yard. With courses changing from year to year to combat the bigger-hitting pros, so too do Graham's yardage books. My rule is, unless you check it, you don't know. So I don't assume anything especially even with regard to sprinklers or bunker edges where the greenkeeper may forget that he's maybe moved a sprinkler because the spray pattern just wasn't quite right. So they had to move it four or five metres one direction. You don't check it. You assume it's the same, leave it in the book. By Monday afternoon, somebody will have picked it up and, and uh, yeah, your name will be in mud. So with it being such a precise art and thousands of euros at stake with every shot, caddies are sure to let Graham know if there's been a miscalculation. For sure. Absolutely. Um, and, yeah, it, it's true. I mean, uh, there's a lot of numbers in the book. I'd, I'd hazard a guess there's probably 800-plus numbers in the, in the book each week. And then they need to get converted from yards to metres as well. So you lose concentration either in the measuring process, the writing it down, or the, or the conversion process. Um, you can easily make a mistake. At 20 euros each, Graham's books are affordable for a client base, which includes the likes of Tiger Woods, Luke Donald and Lee Westwood. But it's their caddies that find the books invaluable. If they've caddied for less than 20 years, they've never had to map a course in Europe or in 25, 27 years in America. So I'd say 95% of the caddies have never measured a course in life. So it's, it's very difficult to assess for the value of something unless you've, you've done it yourself in any business. Heinrich gets to see the world as he maps his way around the European tour's most exotic destinations, but it can be a lonely lifestyle. Yeah, I've travelled on my own for, for a long time. It's, uh, things have changed, of course, now. Anyone who's joined the tour in the last five years especially, I mean, I was lucky when I first started if I could get BBC World Radio. And um, now, of course, most people are travelling with a computer and there's Wi-Fi in a lot of places, so you've got Skype and you can watch TV online or listen to radio fairly easily online. So, yeah, there's a lot of time spent alone, but the, the job does require a lot of time, so it's a lot of work time. Your home officially is Australia for you. Do you ever get there? Uh, once a year. Uh, generally December and January and see, see family down there, but it's nice to escape the Euro European winter. I think I've only had to deal with about three European winters in 23 years, so I've done all right, and there was, there was a good reason for that. I'll let you guess that reason. <laughs>